everyone, so today I will be doing my Draw My Life. So everyone pretty much starts out these things talking about the day they were born, who their parents are, and where they live. But my story is not that typical. In fact, this may be hard to believe, but I have no body at all. My name is A, and I have the ability to live in a person's body for a day. I don't know why or how I've been able to do this. All I know is that every day, I wake up in someone else's body, whether it's a girl or a boy. I have no gender. I have no body of my own. I am only a soul who is doomed to inhabit a person's life every day. I'm sure you can understand how complicated my life is because of that. I can't have my own life, and I can't have a relationship with anyone. At first, I thought switching bodies every day was normal. I thought everyone did it. But I was wrong. I'm the one who's different. Sometimes I wished I could stay in the body I was in forever, that their parents could be my parents, and I could have a family and a life of my own. But that was just wishful thinking. As I grew older, I made two strict rules for myself. Never severely impact or alter the person's life that I possess for a day, and never make relationships. But then someone came around who broke my rules. One day, I woke up in the body of a boy named Justin. Now, Justin wasn't a particularly nice guy. He was entirely obnoxious. He was the type of guy who listened to loud and obnoxious music on a loud and obnoxious station, where loud and obnoxious DJs made loud and obnoxious jokes. And did I mention he was obnoxious? <laughs> anyway, you can clearly tell I didn't like the guy, but I did like his girlfriend. She came up to me while I was at Justin's locker. She was a pretty, quiet girl who averted her eyes from mine and looked down at her worn converse instead. I knew immediately she was afraid of Justin, and Justin was always mean to her. Now, remember how I said someone came around who and broke my rules? Well, that someone was Rhiannon. I was infatuated by her from the moment I saw her. We ended up going to the beach, which surprised her because Justin never took her anywhere but she deserved to be taken someplace special. That day at the beach was the best day of my existence. We frolicked in the sand, we made sand castles, we played in the water, and we might have even shared a few kisses. I fell so deeply in love with her. Somewhere deep inside, I wish she knew it was me and not Justin who was hanging out with her, but I couldn't tell her. I didn't want the day to end, but I knew by midnight I'd already be in another person's body. A few days later, I woke up in the body of a girl named Amy. And that day, I made the crazy decision to go see Rhiannon. I knew I was going to mess up Amy's usual routine, but I couldn't help it. I had to see her. So I drove to Rhiannon's school and approached her and made up some story that Amy was taking a tour of the school because she was thinking of transferring there. So Rhiannon took me on a tour and I spent the whole day with her and I loved every second of it. Then I woke up in the body of a boy named Nathan. That morning, I checked my personal email account. I always put notes there of how my days have been. It's like my personal diary. I checked Justin's email and found out there was a party happening that night and I was pretty sure Rihanna was going to be there. So I did the obvious thing and I went. I found her in the house's den looking at CDs. I went up to her and made small talk. When she asked me who I was, I lied and said I was Steve's, the guy who was throwing this party, cousin. I knew that would soon backfire at me. She asked me to dance and I was happy to. It was an amazing night. I also did something pretty drastic. I asked for her email. That next morning, before I went to church in Roger Wilson's body, I emailed Rhiannon. I was having a great morning until I got an email from Nathan. It appeared I never cleared the history on his computer after I checked my email and he was very suspicious. He claimed he knew he was being possessed. Somehow, he knew he wasn't in control of his body the night before. I didn't email back right away. I had to get my thoughts together before I responded to that. To make matters worse, Rhiannon figured out that I wasn't actually Steve's cousin. That's when I knew I had to tell her the truth. We met up at a cafe. She was expecting to be meeting Nathan, but that day I was in the body of a girl named Megan. So she was confused when I sat at the table with her. I explained everything. How I switched bodies every day, how I was in Justin's body that day he took her to the beach, and how I was Nathan the other night. 
Of course, she didn't believe me at first, but then she did after I gave more evidence. It just took a while. Eventually, she broke up with Justin. I hate to say I was happy, but yeah, I kind of was. After that, me and her started dating, despite my condition. There was one day I woke up in the body of a fat guy and went on a date with Rianne into the movies. I could tell she was pretty uncomfortable around me. I didn't blame her. Then, one day, Rhiannon told me she didn't think she could do this. She didn't see a future with me. She couldn't stand the thought of me being there with her one day and then disappearing the next and who knows where. I understood her worry, but she just couldn't continue our relationship anymore. Meanwhile, news about Nathan's story was everywhere. Nathan claimed he was being possessed by the devil, and everyone believed him, which was annoying because I wasn't the devil. Nathan must have sent me 200 emails asking me who I was. I knew I had to tell him, so I did. We met up at a restaurant, and I was in the body of a girl named Casey. I explained to him how I switched bodies, and he believed me pretty quickly. I told him not to tell anyone, and he promised he wouldn't. I also made it clear that I was not the devil. One day, while in the body of Alexander, I met up with Rhiannon at a bookstore and we ended up going to Alexander's house. I had so much fun with her. We cooked dinner, ate, and hang out in Alexander's treehouse. It was a great night. I told her how I couldn't stay anymore. I couldn't keep interfering with her life. She was upset, but I told her that Alexander would take care of her. I told her he was going to remember this night as the first day they met, and he would love her. That night, we went to bed in Alexander's bed. This was my last night with her, but I would never forget Rhiannon. She gave me a life I never thought I'd had. Even if it was only for a short amount of time, I was grateful for the time I spent with her. I was grateful she loved me, and I would always love her. The next morning, I was in the body of a girl named Katie. Katie didn't know it, but she was going on an adventure, someplace far from here. And for the first time in my life, I ran. <laughs>